Hi, it's Joe from Prep Agent with Stu, a fellow instructor with Prep Agent. You guys see him doing the webinars, as you see me as well. Stu, real versus personal property. Give us some insight. I feel like it's um, an easy topic, so it's one people should not miss. So let's make sure they do not miss this one. Because there's a lot of difficult ones, but this one they should absolutely nail down and not you know, get wrong. What do you think? Yeah, so I mean, a couple things. First of all, thank you for having me on, as always. And second thing is this, uh, real versus personal property, there's a lot of different scenarios that they could go into in the test. So as you know, as we all know as instructors, the test is all scenario-based. So they love putting you in different scenarios like, is this real property? Is this personal property? Is this a fixture? Is this not? Where you have to now apply your critical thinking skills that you've gained through your studies and apply them in real scenario based things. So really a good simple litmus test for is this real or is this personal is does it move? Does the item move? If I took the whole property and I flipped it upside down, does it wiggle? Does it go anywhere? That's a great, great um, example of how you could potentially test for if something is real versus personal property. Real property would typically stay put, okay? It has some sort of method of attachment. So you so have the several things, yeah. These people always say personal property movable, real property immovable. So let's try and think of scenarios where people get um, a little caught up because they tend to memorize that, be like, I'm good, I know it. But I know, for example, if they ask about a lease, that whole movable, immovable thing, they're like, oh, whoa. So at least I teach is personal property. What are some other examples where maybe people could slip sure. up, you know, where it's like, they're like, wait, I memorized personal, movable, real, immovable. They're asking about this whole thing and what, you know, so what are some yeah. other slip ups? So another, another thing that I usually say is, um, you know, when we're talking about cooperatives and you own shares in a corporation, that's personal property. Um, another thing that kind of goes, cuts against the movable, immovable and I talk about this a lot, is the key to the front door of the house. You know, it has a unique legal attachment to the house. Although it's physically movable, I could put it in my pocket, I could put it in my coat pocket. Um, what happens is that cuts against the grain where someone might say, oh, that's personal property. It actually has legal attachment to that front door lock. Would you so there's a couple a scenarios. I would call it 100% a fixture because the front door lock is a fixture and it has a legal attachment to that fixture. So maybe it'd be like that adaptability thing that A and Maria? Absolutely. So when you're talking about the litmus test, which is the, um, the acronym we use for, to test if something is a fixture, it is definitely a unique adaptation that that thing has. Actually, I would say it's an adaptation that the lock has itself, that it needs the front door key to actually be able to work. So that's how I would actually kind of classify that. Right, so for me, personal property, movable, real property, immovable is great. There's sometimes an extra little idea that I use to get over those snafus is the personal property goes with the person, the real property goes with the real estate. Like I guess that yeah. key goes with the real estate. The person doesn't take it with them. Absolutely, and that's another great way to remember it too. You know, and also another thing I talk about is if something has a unique relationship to the parties who, who are attaching it, you know, like it's a family heirloom. So I always talk to my students about, um, hey, if you have a mailbox that you bought at Home Depot, okay, and you install that into the ground, that becomes real property. But if you have a mailbox that maybe was made by your great grandfather, that's like a, a duck woodworking unique uh, fixture to you, what happens is this item is going to probably come with you because number one, it has a unique relationship to you. And also you have the intention of probably moving that to the next property that you go to. So sure. that's something also else that would be considered, in my opinion, personal property. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you. So I guess the moral of the story is sometimes these really simple things, don't just memorize it and move on. Try and put it in real scenarios and apply it instead of scenario based. And if people just stop and memorize a definition of real and personal, they may get slipped up with some of those little nuances we just went over. Yeah. And you know what? This is something that we go over in the uh, private one-on-one -on -one sessions. You know, we kind of talk through it just like you and I are talking through it, you know, so that you can get a better understanding of 
what it is so that when you get to those scenario-based questions, you have a really strong grasp of what it is they're asking you and how to apply your knowledge to it. Perfect. So with that being said, this is Joe and Stu with Prep Agent. Um, you can find our webinar schedule on our website. Also, you can find links to Stu's private tutoring on the website. Just go in the top right corner, hit the scroll down, it's right there. With that being said, bye. Bye-bye.